Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing some French country thrift flips. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Our first project focuses on these two baskets. I thought that they were really sweet. They would be great storage, perhaps in a kitchen, but I wanted to give them a bit of an update. So first of all, I'm going to measure out a label that I'm going to attach. This is drop cloth that I'm just going to cut out to the size that I want. If you're gonna try this at home, just think about the proportions of your basket and how big you want your label to be. I'm then trimming out the first label, getting that to the size that I want and then trimming out the second and again I'm just going to have a bit of a play here working out exactly how big I want it and then going from there. I hope that you guys aren't sick of basket makeovers. I know I not long ago did a video focused on that so if you haven't seen it I will make sure that I pop the link for that in the video but I thought I would just give you guys some more ideas on what you can do with these when you find them in the thrift store. Now that I have my labels ready, I'm going to focus on the basket. I'm going to be dry brushing some of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. Dry brushing is when you get a little bit of paint on your brush, you dab off the excess, and then you move around whatever you're painting with a light hand running your brush over the top. I am now coming in with a paper towel to wipe off any excess. I want this to be really subtle, but you can see here that it makes a big difference. It tones down that orange and it just really gives this a more of a French country feel. So I'm going to repeat the same process, dry brushing the entire basket. And if maybe this wasn't to your liking, you could use a different color on the basket instead of using this creamy tone that I'm going for. Or if this wasn't enough, you could just get a spray can of paint and paint them that way. I know it is a little bit easier to do that. So that is another option. So I'm repeating the same process on both of the baskets. Once my baskets are dry, I'll seal them both with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. I'm now going to be using JRV's Mini Grain Sack Stencils, and I'm going to be taking a few elements from a few different stencils here. I have Umber Silk Mineral Paint on a small artist brush, and I'm dabbing and stippling my paint onto my drop cloth fabric. I'm holding down my stencil really firmly so that there's less of a chance of that paint bleeding underneath my stencil, and I'm just gonna work my way around, making sure that I have enough paint so that you can see the design. So you can see I've swapped from one of the stencils and I'm just grabbing a different element. You can really customize these. You can make them into whatever you like. I've moved on to the second label here. And again, I'm grabbing bits and pieces, just whatever works with the space that I have. I'm then going to pull at the different fibers around the edges and anywhere that I'm having trouble, I'm using a bit of 220 grit sandpaper to help me distress these. We just wanna give them an aged finish, but not too untidy. So you do see that I am going to trim off a few areas where needed. I'm then going to use my heat gun to heat set the paint on the fabric so that when we come in with our water-based product shortly that we don't get any running or smearing of my paint. My label still felt a bit too new for my liking so I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress. To attach our labels, I'm going to be using some of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. I'm going to coat the back of our drop cloth labels really well, making sure that I have really good coverage and that I've soaked it quite thoroughly. You can use most clear coats for achieving the same result or Mod Podge. It really is just up to whatever you have available. So I have my back thoroughly coated. I'm going to position it in the center where I want it to go, but that clear coat is not going to hold it straight away. It's gonna need some time. So to help hold it in place in the meantime, I'm going to use my hot glue gun and I'm going to put little dabs of glue on each of the corners to hold it in place.
once I have the glue down and my label secured in place, I'm going to go around and pull off any of the residual hot glue that's left over, just making sure that that's all out of the way. And then I'm going to go back in with some more flat clear coat. So we're basically sandwiching the label between product. Now this is going to do a few things. It's going to help it attach to the basket, but it is also going to make that label uh, very sturdy, very well wearing. It is going to just really give it that lovely aged effect as well. Now I'm going to move on to the second label for my second basket. So again, I'm repeating those same steps, coating the back of the label really well, positioning it where I want it to go, and then using the hot glue to help secure it in place initially. You could probably use super glue for this step too, but I have learned through experience that super glue sometimes soaks through the drop cloth and then you can actually see where the super glue is. So if you want to get more of a seamless look, I think probably hot glue is the way to go with if you can. And here are our finished baskets. I'm really happy with how these turned out. This is such an easy way for you to transform tired baskets that you find at the thrift store or that you already have around your home. You can transform them into beautiful French country decor. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. Our next project is this iPad leaning stand. It's one of those ones that you lean up against your kitchen backsplash so that you can follow a recipe. And I thought it was wonderful and sturdy, but obviously it needed an update. So after cleaning, I'm going to give this two coats of Dixie Bell's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm painting the entire thing. This doesn't have a stand, but what I thought I would do was that I'd actually add a little hook on the back because I could actually imagine this hanging in someone's kitchen even, maybe with a little pot or something sitting on it. I did test it, so I do know that it could actually work like that. Once my first two coats are dry, I'm using IOD's Melange Paint Inlay, and there's a design in that inlay that's perfect for this. It's this lovely spoon and fork, and I was waiting for a kitchen project that I could use it on. So I'm applying a thick coat of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. You don't want it too thick, but it does need to be thick enough that the paint inlay has something to transfer into. So you've got to find that happy medium. So I I've just put a nice even coat down and now I'm positioning the inlay in the center and very carefully pressing it down. I'm then going to use my fingers to smooth the inlay out to make sure that the inlay is making good contact with my paint. Then I'm using my mister to dampen the inlay. This helps activate that paint. And then I'm using a brayer to smooth and again, apply a little bit more pressure. And I'm also going to use a damp cloth again, just to smooth it all out. This helps minimize those wrinkles that I've heard some people complaining that they get. And then I am going to speed up the drying process around the edges because I love the texture that creates. Once it's completely dry, I am misting it again, using my cloth to dab off any excess. And then after about 60 seconds, I'm going to start to pull the inlay away. You wanna go really slow here. If you feel any resistance, you wanna mist it again, and then start the process again. Start gently pulling your inlay away. I did have a little bit of paint pull up. It's probably because I rushed the painting uh, drying process, but that's okay. I want texture here, so I'm I'm embracing it. Remember to save your inlays as you'll get a few uses out of them. Next, I'm going to be using JRV's Grain Sack Stripe Stencil, and I'm going to be using it on either side of my inlay design. I have not sealed my inlay yet. I am just going to be very careful not to rub or smear that. I wanted to seal everything at once. So I'm using Dixie Belle's French Linen Chalk Mineral Paint. I do have it on a small artist brush to start off with, 
Uh, this was a bit more time consuming. So you will see that I will shortly change over to a JRV stencil brush. This just gave me a better line and it definitely made the job a bit easier. So I definitely recommend using those where you can. So I've swapped over to the other side here and I'm repeating the same process. You can see down the bottom, we do have a bit of a gap. So I'm going to reposition that stencil and do the best I can stenciling it with a small artist brush. And you will see that I do go back in and I use a similar width brush to fill in some of the gaps there and also to tidy up any areas that I had a bit of smudging. Remember when you are stenciling that the best thing to do is to make sure that you are offloading your brush so that you don't have too much paint. To give this more of a vintage feel, I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to distress back the grain sack stripe that I stenciled and also the edges. Once I have the look I want, I will brush off the dust and seal the entire thing with Rust-Oleum's Clear Satin Sealer. I'm now going to use Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze over the top of our dry sealed piece. Because I've sealed my paint, I can now come in and wipe back as much or as little of the glaze as I want. The glaze is going to give it a very subtle antiqued look. I'm applying it over the entire thing, including the back. And again, just wiping it back as much or as little as I want. And I'm also going to then be using some of Dixie Belle's Brown Best Dang Wax. I thought I'd just add just a little bit more age around the edges of the piece. I just love how the glaze and the wax is sitting in that texture that I created by speeding up the drying process. It looks so authentic. Finally, I'm going to use my drill to attach a little hook on the back. And here's our finished iPad or recipe book holder. This project was a blank slate to start off with and I am very happy with how it turned out. Those inlays are absolutely gorgeous and I feel like the grain sack stencils really finish it off. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our final project today is this wooden tray. After cleaning, I'm going to give the tray three coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. I'm using this paint because it has a built-in stain blocker and also a built-in sealer, so it does save a lot of extra steps. It's going to take that many coats because this is a darker colored piece and obviously light colors do tend to need more coats for full coverage. I'm not too worried by the center though, because we are actually going to be doing some decoupage. So this is going to be a lovely bright background for that paper, but I don't need it to be perfect. So my focus really is going to be on getting even coverage on the outside of the tray. In the center, I'm going to be using JRV's Poulette Poulette decoupage paper. I apologize if I said that wrong. And I'm going to have to trim it to size. Obviously, this is quite a large paper design. So I'm just working out here what I want to keep. So just positioning it and then using my fingernails to help crease and mark out where I'm going to have to trim. This tray has indents, so I already know that this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Obviously, whenever we are decoupaging over anything that's not just a simple flat surface, we are definitely creating a challenge for ourselves. but I was determined to use this paper. I've wanted to use it for quite some time ever since I started stocking it, so I thought I was just going to go with it and embrace the wrinkles and the creases. Now I have my paper ready. I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. I'm laying down a strip of product and then smoothing my paper down with a ball of cling wrap. This helps reduce friction. So you can see that indent there and I am having to work it a little bit into that. So again, we are embracing the wrinkles in this. I'm not going to get it perfect, but in a lot of ways, this will just add to the vintage charm of this piece. So I'm also using some water in my mister bottle to lightly 
miss the paper here and there. This helps the paper to expand and stretch without tearing. So you just want to be very careful when you're doing this though. So you can see I'm working my way across, laying the product down and then pressing my paper down and smoothing it out. I still have a bit of a gap between the indents, so I'm using a craft knife to very carefully cut the paper after this is dry. And then I'm using my paintbrush to work product in. This is just to make sure that that paper is completely stuck down and we don't have any air bubbles. I'm repeating the same process for each of those indents. I'm also going to use my craft knife to trim off any excess paper around the edges. I'm then sealing the entire decoupage sheet with that same Dixie Belle flat clear coat. To keep everything even, I'm also applying the same flat clear coat to the rest of the tray. You guys know I love a rustic feel, so I'm now coming in with some 80 grit sandpaper, a little bit coarser this time, and I'm using that to distress the edges of my tray. I'm also then going to come in with some of Dixie Belle's Clear Best Dang Wax. This is going to be a base for our next step. I want to antique this even more, so I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's Brown Best Dang Wax, and I'm really going to work it into those indents and creases. This is going to help hide some of those cuts that I had to make, and it also helps hide uh, the creases in the paper as well. So this is a little tip for you that it can help disguise those. And again, we are embracing the wrinkles. We are embracing the weathered nature of this. I think it just adds to the charm. I'm also adding that same brown wax to the rest of the tray and wiping off the excess. If a rustic look isn't for you, you could always leave this part out. You could go in a different direction and you could use a gray wax. This is just going to be something that you will do to your liking and to whatever look you're trying to achieve. And here's our finished tray. I love how this turned out. I know it's not perfect, but I've accepted the wrinkles. It's probably a good life lesson in there too. And I think that this is a really charming piece. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that it has inspired you to try something different and to embrace the imperfections because that is what it's all about. When we thrift flip, we are giving something new life and new character. Let me know what you think of these projects in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.